Welcome to They Called This a Movie, testing the strength of friendships one terrible movie at a time. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and other podcast services by searching They Called This a Movie and find us on Twitter and Instagram at TicTampod. That's T C T A M Pod. Welcome back to They Called This a Movie. This is Anthony Delvecchio. With me, as always, is Dan Aquino and Mark Byer. Say hello, gentlemen. Hey, friends. Hello, everyone. Uh, happy holidays uh, to everyone out there. Um, one thing I can report back I did uh, some last minute holiday shopping with my sister, and all those reports about you know, malls and stores being mostly empty, for the most part, are true. Um, you know, it wasn't, this was the Saturday before Christmas, and I would say half full, you know, Targets and Best Buys and stuff. So it was pretty interesting uh, from the times we used to go out there for Black Friday and it'd be like people pushing past you and, you know, m- you know, acting like, I guess, children at times trying to get items. Um, very chill and relaxed. And it was it was weird for the first time in about a year or two actually doing physical shopping. We need to bring back people r- running over each other in the malls. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be a proper country. Yeah. Again, when people are uh, waiting for the things to be open at, at two o'clock in the morning and then before they even rip the plastic off, they're already reaching over the employee to, to grab the things out of the box. I, did I did I tell you guys the story? This is get, This is going to make it sound bad, but... This is just, remember, this is just a father's love for their child, okay? Just keep that yeah, in mind. Will do. When I was little, I, I really liked Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And apparently I wanted this Leonardo action figure. Yeah. And my dad couldn't find it. He looked everywhere. He was he was basically doing a jingle all the way. Yeah. Where he just went to all these different toy stores, couldn't find it. Finally, he found the exact one that I was looking for, but some other woman had it in their shopping cart. <laughs> and then he the way he said it was she was distracted and he just kind of lifted it from yoinked her. it yeah he yoinked it uh this is before she paid for it correct yes okay so That's he didn't just... outright steal from somebody correct again <laughs> and we'll never be able to tell so <laughs> i'm taking him at his word from what he told me uh yeah, he basically said, yeah, you know, she was doing something, wasn't paying attention. I just went in and took it. I was like, oh, well, that's wrong. But I also appreciate it because I had my, <laughs> my action yeah. figure. And I was able to assemble the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And we, uh, I, I told my wife that story. And she, she said, you know, there's, there's a little kid out there who probably didn't turn out well. Because <laughs> Bob didn't bring home that Leonardo action figure. He's probably, like, in jail now. Killed somebody. It's the butterfly effect of the Leonardo Di- uh, DiCaprio. Jesus, <laughs> Leonardo. <laughs> it was. It was. That's the real story. It was a Leonardo DiCaprio figure <laughs> from the hit movie "What's Eating Gilbert Grape." Oh, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the hottest seller that year. <laughs> your, your your dad got confused. Like the people, yeah. like those photos <laughs> online of the people that gave their kids switches. And they gave them like audio switchers. Yeah, yeah well, uh, yeah, I was, uh, but it it's exactly what I wanted. So he lucked out. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, Jen might be right about that, but better them than you. Really? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. This this made up kid. Well, not made up. I mean, like this, whoever the kid is, I don't know him. I'll never see him or her. Yeah, she so. could have been a scalper turning those, you know, just turning those around. That's a good way to look at it. That's a nice yeah. spin. Yeah, he was in the wrong. My dad did us a favor. Did yeah. the world a favor. Exactly. <laughs> thank, thank you for uh, for making one of my my the memories of my dad. <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna yeah. come in there. Like Jen, did you ever think that maybe my dad was helping? <laughs> yeah i I avoided I avoided Christmas shopping at the last minute. Although I did go to. Shoprite at seven o'clock in the morning on Christmas Eve, and Ooh. it was still filled with old people. Yeah, yeah old, old people. Old yeah, people stay they... away from Shoprite. Do just yeah. do Shoprite at home. I'm sick and tired of just being in your presence at Shoprite. Which, like the 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 old couples with the woman that's there on a mission, and the old man that has absolutely no idea what he's doing. He just got. He's just wandering around the aisles, just yeah. getting in my fucking way. 
Yeah. So I see 2024 is going to be Ant's villain arc as against old people. Yeah. Just die, die already and leave your houses to millennials. God. So, <laughs> so I was going to ask you, are you only angry at old people in ShopRite or is it yes. just, okay. But, just oh, no, it's the Florida. only time I come in contact with them and there's never a good time because yeah. my particular ShopRite is right across the street from a 55 and older community. So wow. they are always there. And I go at non-peak hours. I'm usually yeah. there like on a Monday, three o'clock in the afternoon. And Still bad. just flooded with old people. I think they just bust them in across <laughs> the street. And it's yeah, just nice. And they're just it's it, it's it's really it's the old men that have no business being there because they have no idea why they're there. Yeah. And they they're just like and they're just they're like taking a constitutional through the aisle. So it's like, man, I am in and out. I know what I need. I'm mm-hmm. in, get my stuff, and I'm gone. I don't need you just kind of like moseying to your flip flops <laughs> and your sweatpants. Yeah. <laughs> that that was me on uh, New Year the uh, New Year's Eve Eve. I had to uh, I had to go get some stuff for Jen made homemade focaccia bread. So I I had to go to the uh, not the mall the 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 grocery store and all i had to do was get four uh cloves of garlic and i wound up spending like an hour just kind of walking around <laughs> so aunt would have hated me like get this guy out of the <laughs> yeah i we i locked eyes with the guy about my age and he just said to me like i can't people today i was like yep <laughs> i know i know what that's like buddy yeah yeah i can't I old that. people every day <laughs> yeah i, I I had to, I was basically being the person just walking around um, on Saturday because my sister helped me. I uh, purchased a new TV. Um, so I'm like, she has the van to get the TV home. So she's like, I'm going Christmas shopping if you need the van. And I'm like, shit. Damn, yeah. Double okay. <laughs> just stay out of the grocery stores, man. Yeah, just stay out of the grocery, grocery stores. stores. Yeah, that's all I ask. The, the fun part about the mall that we went to, we went down to Delaware um, the Mall, was they had the, uh, this, the Sparrows was still there, but it wasn't it wasn't Sparrows. They uh, basically took the Sparrows sign down and put up a sign that said pizza, and then that was it. Kept everything else about the Sparrows sign up there, except the nameplate. <laughs> it was like, oh, you know, even 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 Sparrows is leaving malls now. I haven't had Sparrows in years. I think the last time I had Sparrows was in a, when I was in Manhattan. I'm sure you're Michael Scott. <laughs> sort of. I was running late for... Uh, Dan, there, there is not... A, a, a end <laughs> to this story where it makes it better. No, no, I, listen, I'm not. <laughs> no. I'm not trying to make an excuse. I'm not. I admit my wrongdoing. It's just I was lazy. It was there. There was is a pizza. Square. There's there's a pizza joint on every goddamn corner of that city. No. You know what? The I only way that, the only <laughs> way this makes it worse. The only way it you could be worse if it, if you're talking about a California pizza kitchen. No, I, I can't. <laughs> It, it might be like a decade since I've had California Pizza Kitchen, but I I think I was I was with Jen. We were going to see. This is not going to make this story any better. <laughs> but we were going to see the Fellowship of the Ring live in concert, and we were walking to R- Radio City, and I kept thinking, oh, we'll find something on the way. We'll find something on the way, and there was just nothing that we could eat that was by oh. Radio City. So we just kind of settled for Sabaros. Yeah, paid nine dollars for that slice too. I, we, I mean, yeah, it wasn't dollar <laughs> slices. <laughs> but, but like, oh man, my, if yeah, if my my family were around now, they would give me a slap. <laughs> All right, yeah. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. This is our post Christmas episode, and Happy New Year. That's coming up a couple days away. We don't really have a whole lot here today on this episode. It's sort of a wrap up show. I don't have any notes. I don't have any plans. I guess we could talk about uh, movies that we watched this year. I went the Mark route. You know, since we stopped doing the what do we watch this week, I took that as a note where I don't have to try and come come to the episode every week with, with a new movie that I've watched. So I've watched very little movies these, this year. Uh, but we could talk about the movies that we did watch this year for the podcast, not on the podcast. Yeah. I don't know. This is freeform, guys. This is this is the week yeah. I am off of work, so I ain't doing shit. This sort of the situation. Was, yeah, me and and uh, me and Dan were talking um, uh, before you got here pre podcast 
Um, and thing I would love to talk about is I realized that our February was pretty good for our standards. It basically encapsulates um, what the podcast usually is. Um, you know, Jar Jarry. Um, you know, we start off with Gamer, then we had Twilight, and then Out for Justice, and then Abraxas. And I feel like we had a good time with all four of those movies um, in, in one way or the other. Because um, we had, uh, I believe, Tia as a guest on for Twilight. Um, so, yep. you know, it showed a, uh, you know, how our, how our show is involved to include guests. And then also some of the, you know, uh, greatest hits of types of movies we watched there. Um, so I just, I just really enjoyed looking that February and then, um, yeah, I don't know if, uh, yeah, anything else, like, I, I guess this first part, we can just do like, talk about our favorite movies we did for the podcast, uh, this year. Sure. Yeah. The February is a pretty solid, solid month for this past year. I mean, gamers sucked, yes. but <laughs> the Twilight's Twilight. Out yeah. for Justice was awesome. That was a praxis. <laughs> Out for Justice is top five this year yeah, definitely i'm trying i'm looking at the list right now of movies that i hadn't seen before um i can't believe rocky five was this year yeah it feels like such a long time ago well, uh, uh tom who was a guest that episode from mark's other podcast uh game vault pod uh he'd been dying for us to cover rocky five for quite a while yeah so maybe that's why it feels as if it had been done earlier maybe maybe you weren't on that episode right i don't think i was no no. I, I might have been on vacation. I think that I think you were because we. I think that's why we finally decided to do it. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, you know what? Uh, my favorite. We've watched a lot of movies this year. My favorite episode that we did was Baywatch: Bash of the Beach. Yeah, yeah that was really good. That was surprisingly fun. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the first episode in a while that I um, re-listened to because I do not like hearing myself. Um, on podcasts, I'll usually just download so that we, you know, get the download. But um, but I listened back because I was not on that episode. I, uh, and I laughed the entire time I was in the car. You guys, that was such a good, um, just from my perspective, just the joy you guys felt watching that episode um, as you expressed it. Like every so often, be like, oh, yeah, remember this? You know, one of those like kid like things. Um, we, were, we were talking about it after we recorded. And Anthony and I were, were spitballing, like, if we ever do a uh, Patreon, like, we'll just, like, run through Baywatch episodes. <laughs> That's how much we enjoyed it. Yeah, that was a good time. Uh, Jim Cotta was a great, great one we had. Uh, Matt Singer on. It was a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, I forgot that we... Ryan Nanny. Yeah, I, yeah. Forget, I forgot that we had three straight guests on in May. Yeah. Was yeah, we, uh, was it Matt from VHS Abyss, Ryan Nanny... Uh, we had um, our friend Guy on for Viva Chiba. That feels like it was forever ago, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, who, yeah. Who we uh, we had Alex and uh, the, the binge cast, Alex and Pete, for yep. I'm Here I'm Now. Here now. Which, uh, Neil Breen, I'm, always going to be top five. By yeah. the way, that, that is a great back-to-back there in June with the girl who believes in miracles. Yeah. And, right. then, the, and then the Neil Breen movie. Yeah. And Orbo, Jesus in Jeans. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was a good one. Yeah. I I was really I was very happy with. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a more recent episode, but uh, the Karate Christmas Miracle. Oh yeah, was really good. Uh, DC Down was the, a lot of fun. Yeah, the uh, the best part about Karate Christmas Miracle um, is explaining it to other people <laughs> and just seeing their heads explode. Yeah, it, yeah. It, I just I liked it because it was the first time we've ever like on podcasts figured out a mystery <laughs> with, yeah. the, with the guy who wrote it. What, what was his name? Um, Ken Del Vecchio. Ken Del Vecchio. Yes. So we, we discovered that he's a misogynistic weirdo. Yeah. Uh, who ran for Congress, right? Yeah. Yes, he did. Pretty wild stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Who else? Do we have any other uh, guests? I'm trying to think. Well, was Jen there for RIPD? She uh, was, yeah, there she for, was there for yeah. uh, Like you said, Tia from Top Ten with Tia, she was on. We had Steve from uh, Oh yeah, Halloween is Forever. Talk about Death Spa. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Realizing looking at this list that we watched two Friday the Thirteenth movies this year because there's two January. Friday Thirteenths this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I did not realize that part two until I looked at the list was this year. Yeah, 
That was early in the year, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it was the second episode of the the year, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty. Yeah. Again, just a. Uh, not many misses, I would say, and I know I'm biased, but I, you know, I would say the movies that were rough, really rough to watch and do an episode on were few and far between. We did a lot better. Um, did a little more research, took a couple shots in the dark and, you know, uh, some were, and, and a lot of times it seems like the shots in the dark, for the most part, turned out to be just okay movies that we couldn't really make fun of. Um, like, um, outside of talking about sexy Bigfoot. There wasn't much to really, you know, pick at with Son of Bigfoot. It was just a kid's movie. Right. You know. Uh, Throw Mama from the Train. Yeah. It was, uh, it was an interesting movie. Yeah, uh, probably. Probably uh, slightly too good or, like, mundane for the for the podcast. I, I think it was unexpectedly decent. Yeah. For what it was. It, it definitely wasn't great. But, you know, I, I think it caught us all by surprise. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, then we had movies like Sins of Desire where I don't think any of us knew what it was really going in. Mm-hmm. And that, and that, that surprised us in a good way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think overall just like another solid year yeah. of bad movies. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty uh, happy with how this year has gone. Uh, one too many uh, weeks with no episode, but you know, those are extenuating circumstances that have popped up several times yeah. this year. Life. So. Life gets in the way sometimes, but um, I did yeah. love that it looks like we did three movies with wrestlers in them this year. Let's get cool. those numbers up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we had the, we had the condemned, then uh, Bash of the Beach, and Abraxas. Uh, and, Abraxas. Oh, four, four. Abraxas, yeah. and then uh, Three Ninjas High Noon at Mega Mountain. Yeah, that movie disappointed me, and the only reason why was because. I thought Hulk Hogan was going to be the bad guy in that movie. Uh-huh. And he just turned out to be a, a really useless I mean, character. I mean, that, uh, um, you know, Hogan is always the bad guy. Well, he, I, I think at that point he was about to transition to Hollywood Hogan. Yeah, that was like the end. Yeah, so he uh-huh. was still a, a face at that point. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. The, the way I remember seeing him on the box art, because he was a very imposing figure on him. Like, oh, he's the bad guy. But no, just a, a boring, mundane actor. Good guy wearing a toupee. Yeah. I don't know. We know what you look like, man. We, we've <laughs> seen you wrestle. Uh, this year is first year in a while we haven't done a Stock by My Doctor episode. Just ran out of time. Yeah. Yeah. Spread them out. Yeah. Oh, how many are left? I think there's only one. Okay. Yeah. So we, we got to save it. That should be a, in case of emergency break sure. the glass kind of thing so like when <laughs> when trump gets reelected, we'll just we'll, we'll break the glass like all right the world is shit let's watch stalked by my doctor kind of makes me sad that you said when and not if if yeah well listen world, <laughs> i'm a realist okay yeah. writing's on the wall isn't it yeah yeah it's it, there's nothing that could be done it's been foretold in the stars yeah it's, i apologize guys it's okay we got like 11 months before we're really sad. Yeah, so get your affairs in order. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sun might explode. Hey, yeah. or, his, or his heart might explode. Either one. Either one. Some, Either one. Something bad's got to happen, hopefully. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just, just save us from that catastrophe. <laughs> uh, other than, uh, what, uh, what are you guys looking forward to in 2024 for the podcast? Uh, well, I'm always, I think me and Dan are in the same boat with this, um, is that uh, I think I think getting more guests on is always good, even if it's the same people, you yeah. know, just, you know, having having that uh, fourth voice of being someone that may be trained to do podcasts and stuff like that, um, you know, kind of. We have 260 brings- episodes under our belt. Uh, if we're not if we're not professionals at this point. <laughs> no, no, no. I wasn't saying us. I'm saying instead of just bringing like. <laughs> A friend on that never podcast or you know something like that um, yeah a guy calling you out it's actually you know, good but... <laughs> our biggest fans Let, let's let's rip our biggest fans yeah that's where mark thinks we're at now yeah we, yeah, we could just like trash we're bigger, we're bigger. Yeah, Forget yeah he's he's low he's 
Yeah, minor. Well, he would technically compared. be a professional. Then hasn't he done two episodes with us? <laughs> He's a recurring guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The both episodes were five thousand hours long. So, yep, he's a professional now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that, that's why. That's why I wasn't even thinking of him, guys, because he's already a professional. <laughs> that guy is far more enthusiastic about it than I am most of the time. <laughs> he, he will come to me, and this is a good thing. Like, you got to try this. Yeah. You know, watch this. Like, yeah. He he cares. Yeah. And and I'm he, just like, he, oh, that looks good, I guess. Yeah, he and he listens to the episodes, which one two thirds of us could say that. One third of us could say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Mark, I we need a, a an apology to Guy on I, I, it doesn't have to be right now, but at some point in the episode. <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe okay. next episode will be your bit. Your apology to <laughs> Guy. We'll give you a week. We'll give you a week to write it. <laughs> yeah. To, should I write it up like the DX apology <laughs> to the USA Network? Are you gonna Are you gonna be up with him all night? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, yeah, I but, I agree. I echo Mark's sentiments um, in terms of having guests on. And again, I I really enjoy having Steve from Halloween is Forever, uh, the binge guys, the binge cast guys on. Just good people. Uh, Tia, always fun. Uh, but yeah, I mean. We, we we I I know I say it a lot, but I need to get over my fear of just messaging people. Yeah, yeah. and just go for the gusto, really. Um, yeah, I and and my point with that is just they 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 just bring a different energy um, to the podcast that you know is nice to break it up from you know just the three of us. Um, yeah, you know, even if like we don't have to do three in a row like we did in May this year, but you know, having it spread out. Like makes like a special episode, you know, um, with somebody on. But I think the I think the big addition that we did this year um, that has helped us out a lot. And um, I felt like we stayed on top of each other with the putting the uh, movies that we want to do into the Google Sheet and like making sure like double checking um, that we didn't put a movie that would be terrible as an episode and, and stuff like that. Um, I know, or maybe it's just me, got shot down a few times by Anthony um, on there, uh, just because I'll go random and just see, like, like something or somebody mentions it at work, and then you look up the letterbox and go, ah, I don't think so, um, for it. So I think that that's helped us do what we've done this year. Um, so I'm looking forward to continuing that. And um, I think the thing I'm looking most forward to, if I want to jump to 2025, is... I really can't wait for Dan to see the final two movies of Twilight, um, because if the if the first three have broken his brain a little bit, those two movies are just insane. Um, and so, if we're still luckily, if if the world is still around in February 2025, um, you know, we'll start that. But um, I don't know about you, but I'll pass it on that that you guys um, uh, give your opinions here. But um, I think we need to try and see if we can find more weird movies like deadly cheer mom like those yeah. like maybe lifetime original type deals like stuff by my doctors and the same thing um because i feel like they're more easy to pick apart than trying to find like um some of the actual uh motion pictures yeah i think i think we there i think the risk of having a not necessarily a bad episode but a, an episode in which we've picked a movie where it's we come away with it just basically saying this movie was kind of just boring. Uh, mm-hmm. The risk is higher when it's a movie like Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance, right? A yeah. movie that has $75 million behind it. Mm-hmm. It can only be so bad, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah, it's not going it, to be laughably bad. It's not going to be laughably bad. And it's not going to be particularly weird. Like, I think there are some times when you have a movie that is just a weird movie that somehow got a, a major release. Like I'm thinking of the Matthew McConaughey and Hathaway movie where they're in a video game. I can't think of the name off the top of my head. Not Divergence. No, it was a it was a one word title, I believe. Yeah. But it's just it's a odd film that somehow got a, le- a a release when it's a bigger budget like that. There's there's little risks made, or mm-hmm. little risks yeah. taken, so it just becomes you know. A forty-five percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which it's not necessarily, you know, it's just kind of lame, basically more than anything, right? But um, 
Yeah, I, I I echo the sentiment of you know always wanting to expand the the people that we reach out to to try and come on our show, and we talk about that often. Um, and sometimes we're we're more on top of it than other times. <laughs> I think sometimes we're just we get into a, ni- a nice comfortable place where we're just like you know what I'm just going to do another episode with the three of us. And but you know. That is kind of a New Year's resolution of sorts. If I was a, a person that would to do that, was to maybe get a more consistent um, guest space going. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that makes sense. Uh, and, and and also we, we you take into account what we are. You know, we're we're not big time or anything like that. Obviously, so getting guests isn't so so easy as just reaching out to someone and just saying and, and just scheduling these chunks of of weeks out of yeah so so it's always special when we get someone like uh like a ryan nanny or a matt singer like and and not discrediting the other guests we had on but you know someone like matt singer who is like a published author yeah is that's that's a big deal for people like us and uh you know i was i hang my hat on that for this year that's a huge accomplishment yeah uh, you know, to say we had a published author on our podcast, it's great. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, again, uh, Steve from Halloween is Forever, excellent podcast. You should go check that out. They are awesome. Anthony, you've been on their podcast a few times. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, just just as, as long as we keep having good people on, I think it's a, a win for, for us, obviously. Um, I, I think what I would like to branch out is... Uh, maybe a little bit different content and maybe not deviating the podcast itself, but we've talked about having a Patreon or just and this year we did Baywatch. We did seventh heaven. So we, we kind of branched out a little bit in that aspect and it was fun. It was something different. So maybe exploring different avenues in the future would be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was thinking about that um, of like, you know, we're still doing the, the, movie of the months um even though our method has changed mm-hmm. now because the twitter because twitter is garbage now it yeah. really feel, it, it feels like walking through a mall nowadays <laughs> with all where, the old people <laughs> no, no with like none of the stores open except for a few stragglers yeah. uh it, it really is that vibe so we've changed that so maybe it's an opportunity is like well maybe we could spend the last month the mat last episode of every month doing you know something different uh oh, something to think too, about yeah. yeah so yeah definitely a thing i you know patreon is a thing where it's like are we ever going to get any are we going to get anybody to actually subscribe to it and it's like well they won't subscribe to it and unless yeah if it's not there so maybe it's a thing where it's like we just have to get over that fear of nobody subscribing and just put it up and then if somebody does somebody does and then we'll be uh, then we'll have to do something for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll just yeah, we'll meet and see what we want to do for it, and then put it up. And then after like what a year, eighteen months or something, if it get no traction, you know, what's the? There's no harm, and right. then we just pull Back it down to where we started. Right. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, we we get paid to do this in in a way of speaking, right? Ads. We get ads on this, so yeah, we yeah. are we are professionals in that sense. <laughs> Yeah. You, you may not know it from listening to last week's episode, but <laughs> where I where I forgot to talk about certain things. But listen, you know, mistakes happen. The, well, even the best of the best. That, that, make that probably mistakes. shows that there might only be one professional on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and listen, uh, I think it, it, it shows you, you know, we're human. We make mistakes. Yeah. And uh, it, it does go to show you how important the three of us are yeah. together as, as a unit. Um, yeah, it, it's fun. We, everyone has their strengths and, and all that. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it, as we've talked about it, we talk about it every year at the end, as long as we're still having fun doing this, we will continue to do it. And I'm still having fun. Yep. Yeah. Same. And, uh, yeah. I think, um, the, the good thing about doing this podcast all the time is, you know, it keeps me engaged to probably want to go, see actual movies or, or scope out things on streaming. Um, you know, it, it's one of the reasons I signed up for, you know, movie pass, even though it's probably more complicated than a list or anything with all the changes they've made lately to it. But 
you know, it, it, it allows me to stay a little bit engaged and, you know, maybe see future movies down the road for it. Um, I know, yeah, I know, I know this year it was like a movie like Cocaine Bear feels like it's a movie we can see in two to three years um, to, you know, make fun of or plain could be a Gerard Drury movie. Um, but yeah, yeah, I feel, I feel this, this podcast, just like uh, Game Ball Pod, um, is a reason for me to stay up to date on, on things that I probably would fall off of if I didn't have the podcast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, besides this podcast, what did you guys, any movies from this year you guys want to talk about? I, like I said, I think I've seen like seven movies from this year, which is not great. <laughs> well, you did the inverse of what you, and you said it before the inverse of what Mark did. Yeah. So you guys just basically swapped positions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm at 13 for the year, with I'm probably at... one more this weekend. So, oh, yeah, should um, say straight. Hold on, I'm yeah, at... I've, I've seen four. I've seen four in theaters this year. Yeah. Yep, I think only of my list, only one has not been in theaters. Um, of uh, you know, I saw Megan on Peacock, but or M3 again. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't think anybody's yeah. saying that. <laughs> um, but, um, Dan, how many did you say you had? 36. 36. How many have you seen in theaters? Uh, ooh, a good amount. Uh, I'd have to one, uh, five. I think it was six, seven, eight, nine, uh, uh, nine. From what I've seen, yeah, yeah, nine. Yeah, I think, and I think this year in movies has been um, both of what I've seen um, has both had a couple surprises and um, you know a couple known entities being good. Um, like I think my biggest surprise of the year is how actually good the D and D movie is. Um, yeah, yeah. That I, uh, I I've seen I watched that actually twice. You know, I saw it in theaters and I watched it on the plane ride back from England. Um, uh, and uh, you know, and then the other surprise one was Barbie being as good as it was. Um, I'm still quoting Ken stuff. You know, how many months later? Um, every so often. Um, but yeah, and then obviously. Uh, Probably my movie of the year is Across the Spider Verse, and I was expecting it to be. Um, that movie, that movie's really good. There's it's a whole thing they do with Gwen Stacy's character and the way it's animated and colored that I didn't catch on to right away, but was amazing once they revealed it um, how they were able to do that. Um, and then I just saw Iron Claw, which is the movie about the wrestling Von Eric family. Um, and as somebody that knows the whole backstory. Um, it was fun to disassociate myself with that knowledge and just watch the movie for the movie. Um, and it's a really good film um, with great perform- great performances. Zac Efron, um, Jeremy Allen White, you know, do good jobs. And if you have no idea what Kerry Von Erich looks like, Jeremy Allen White's perfectly fine um, in, in this role. But they do a good job of getting across the main points in that movie, which is that the brothers loved each other and that the father was an asshole. Um, and you know, and it was it, it was it was nice and well done. Not a surprise. Just uh, my favorite part was uh, being in a theater with three people that had no idea about the story, and then one of the things occurs to the brothers, and there's an audible gasp in the movie theater. Um, and I'm like, oh, they did their job. That scene, they sh- the way they shot it was meant to elicit that reaction, and they did. But yeah, those were probably the four movies that I had a good time with. Oppenheimer was good, um, but it's one of those that. Theaters really didn't wouldn't make or break it, but um, and then uh, of the uh, movies that I was uh, forced to watch uh, by my niece, uh, Scream Six was based was okay. You know, I'm not really an Avatar person. Um, I went and saw that movie, but yeah, yeah. But uh, the only thing I'm really upset about about this year is that you know, Plane comes out, great movie, and then they announce another movie that Gerard Butler's doing about being on a, a ship or something, and they didn't name it Boat or Ship. Um, it, it got some other names, so I was kind of disappointed after hearing that because I, for one, am a fan of really dumb movie titles. But you, Dan, anything? Oh yeah, I was very happy with the, the movies that I saw, uh, especially in theaters. I saw some some really good ones. Uh, uh, my number one movie was Godzilla minus one. Uh, I I had heard, and I'm very biased. I I like Godzilla movies regardless. Uh, even if he, a giant lizard wasn't in this movie, it would have been excellent. Uh, it's it's a really good study about uh, survivor's guilt, PTSD, how a nation treated 
it's returning uh, soldiers, and then, yeah, you just throw in a 100-foot fire-breathing monster, and it kind of accelerates it. Uh, Spider-Verse, I, I don't have it as high as Mark. I have it at my third spot. It's excellent. I still like Into the Spider-Verse more, I would say. Uh, I thought Across the Spider-Verse was a little too hectic. I had trouble kind of focusing in certain areas. But it, again, excellent film. Very much looking forward to the the third movie. Uh, Oppenheimer, great movie. <laughs> you, you guys are probably going to... Uh, be upset with me on this and my sister told told me i gave her the ick when i i said this but i have mission impossible above barbie and i apologize because i know everyone loved barbie but uh, i completely forgot there was a mission impossible movie that came out this i year. think a lot of people did because barbie came out the next weekend <laughs> uh but it was just really good action that's i i'm a sucker for that kind of stuff if, if barbie had a scene where she flies off a cliff and nose dives into a moving train it would have been higher that's all i'm saying but it, it did not so mission impossible took that spot uh asteroid city excellent I, I would say my along with dungeons and dragons mark yeah the the movie that surprised me the most that i liked was this little it was like an indie horror maybe not an indie horror but this lesser known horror movie called cobweb oh I with heard. It's really good uh, with Lizzie Kaplan and Anthony Starr and uh, Jake, uh, not Jake Busey, uh, Gary Busey's child, Luke Busey, is in it. Uh, I don't I, I'm surprised that he's still having kids, but <laughs> here we are. Uh, but yeah, it, I think it's on Hulu now. I would highly recommend it. Very, very interesting movie. Uh, I'm not. And this is another one that's probably going to get me crucified, but. <clears throat> I was not not super high on Killers of the Flower Moon. It, I liked it. It was a good movie, but I, I think everyone was kind of overstating how good it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's still in my top 10, but it's at the number 10 spot. Uh, I, I think I, I, I was happy with everything I, I saw this, this year for the most part. I, like Towards the bottom, we have the, sh the Shazams, the Transformers. Wait, you've Wait. seen those? Yeah. Good lord. <laughs> well, I I didn't You're see part them. of the problem. I didn't see Shazam and Transformers in theaters. Mm, I, I don't know. You feel I, like the problem. Well, I, I, I've always been a problem. That's that, I saw the Pope's Exorcist. Oh, uh, Jesus fucking I, Christ. I did see the Flash in theaters. <laughs> so sorry. That <laughs> that was it, and we've already gotten to the point on Twitter. Where there's flash apologists. Oh uh, yeah, we, we sped that up. Has there been Rebel yeah. Moon apologists yet? Oh yeah, but we know what that <laughs> is. That I I predicted to one of my coworkers. I was like, watch that when that movie comes out, it's gonna get like a thirty to forty percent of on the critic scale, but be like eighty percent on the yeah. fan score because these weirdos are gonna make all these accounts like best movie ever great movie i love this movie and sure enough when i first when the first reviews came out 20 percent on rotten tomatoes for the uh critics 87 <laughs> percent. i think it, i think it's come down i haven't checked it yeah but yeah there you know yeah christopher I'm... nolan talking about how Zack snyder has uh influenced all modern sci-fi like, uh i don't know about that man but it's okay chris you know yeah I, maybe uh, maybe Snyder has some dirt you, on Nolan. You, you're gonna win Best Director, dude. Probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't need to. You don't need to go to bat <laughs> for Snyder. <laughs> this is gonna devolve into me just dumping yeah. on Snyder. So, um, I, so I, we'll I, move on. Um, why are yeah. you seeing Aquaman this weekend? Since you're parting of the problem. Oh God, no. <laughs> no, I I want to see the Iron Claw. Yeah, yeah. I, I would highly recommend. Like, one. yeah, that's my number two. Um, yeah, I just couldn't just I just couldn't suspend disbelief enough from knowing the actual story to make it number one. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. The the funny part about Aquaman is that um, I was following like some critics online, and one of them was like, "So it's like uh, four hours till the first showings hit, and uh, none of us have gotten copies to review." <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's a good or bad sign for this movie. Yeah, <laughs> is what one of the critics said. But yeah, they, they just looks like they dumped it. Like I didn't even know it was coming out until I saw that those tweets. 
yeah, I, I think they're just kind of hoping like it does as well as it can. And then we move on. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm totally over, over the superheroes. Over oh, yeah. it. Get, it, get it out. Mm. I'm done. Yeah, it, it's on its way out. Move on. Like yeah. old pe- like old people in the in the grocery store. Just gotta mm-hmm. get out of yeah, my fucking yeah. way. Yeah, you gotta make way for the, the good stuff, man. Like the, the mean girls musical. <laughs> That's what we need. That's what a America needs to heal. Yeah. As for me, I've seen about ten movies this year. And I want to see the Iron Claw, but that's one of the movies that my wife has said she wants to see. So that is a complicated thing because my wife's hobby is not going to the movies. So she will say, I don't want to go, actually. Let's go see it another time. So we've canceled twice. We're supposed to go see it on Tuesday. We're supposed to go see it today. So currently we're seeing it Saturday. I feel like she gets one more shot. Otherwise, I'm going to see without her. (laughs) I think that's fair. Yeah. As much as I love your wife, I I think you you give her three strikes and and you're up. Yeah. The only reason why she wants to see it is because she has a thing for Jeremy Allen White. Don't know how I feel about it, but, you know, (laughs) I'll the marriage counselor will hear about it. Yeah. (laughs) Save it for the the session. Yeah. Uh, But I did try and actually have a couple of movies that I've watched recently. I did go to the theaters to say poor things which was really good. If you like uh, Yorgos Lanthimos movies, I suggest it. It's it's horny Frankenstein. They do not shy away from the fucking, which is always good. So Gen Z is going, heads are going to explode because <laughs> every three months we have the, the, the discourse on X formerly known as Twitter about whether or not nudity and sex is important in films. And this movie would be weird without it. So there that is. Uh, I also saw Infinity Pool, which is another weird one. I went, I decided to watch weird movies when I went to go see movies. So that one I actually saw on Hulu, which is um, David Cronenberg's son's movie about uh, clones and Mia Goth getting you to do weird shit, which probably relatable. And that was good, too. That was weird. So I feel like weird stuff. I have those are my two recommendations. So Wonka was fine. It was the second best Wonka movie I've ever seen. So <laughs> that's all I asked it to be. Yeah, I saw a lot of stuff on Netflix. I'm looking through this. Uh, no Hard Feelings, the Jennifer Lawrence movie I saw, it was which was fine. Um, yeah, I, I, I could probably put a list together of movies I saw parts of and then just ultimately <laughs> just stopped watching. Like Leave the World Behind, VHS, the new VHS movie that came out this year. I don't remember which version that is. 96, 95, something like that. Saw parts okay, of that. Yeah. Saw parts of D&D. Yeah. I saw lots of movies about 40 minutes through and then just stopped. That, that should be that should be a new list of movie categories for end of the year. <laughs> movies that were pretty good from the amount I've saw it. <laughs> I watched 10 minutes of, uh, of this movie. It was great, but then I had to go. <laughs> I never went back to it. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure the rest of it was fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's that was my that that's one thing I I want to try and get back to going to movies a little bit more often next year. There's a bunch of movies that I missed. I missed Thanksgiving. I really wanted to see. Uh, I want to see Killers of Flower Moon. I wanted to see Oppenheimer. Though for those two, it really came down to the runtime. Mm, yeah, I just couldn't uh, even. Uh, Poor things is two hours and twenty minutes, and that gave me pause. I was like, mm, "Do I wanna?" Yeah. So, but were, you, were you happy that you saw it? Yeah, I wound up catching like a ten fifty showing. I like looked up, and it was like a half hour before screening. I was like, "Oh, you know what? I'm gonna go now." Bye. Go. <laughs> was that yeah. just by yourself? You said by myself. Easiest way to go to see a movie. <laughs> I, you no, know, I I would have to agree with you. I'm I don't mind going by myself. It's so easy. Like, I don't have to worry about, oh, well, I really want to see it. Like, like Lynn, she she has to be in the mood to go see a movie. Mm-hmm. Me, I could just be like, I'm just going to go, you know. So yeah. it's a lot easier to know a movie that she has no interest in seeing and then just going by myself. Easy peasy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yeah, that's, that's always been the great part. You don't have to worry about what time. You don't have to worry about if they like the movie, you know, if it was worth their time. You just go yeah. and... If you waste your own time, then it's your own damn fault. Yeah. yeah. And I got home at like two o'clock. It was fine. Worked out. Went to the record store right after because it was right next to it. 
it was good. Nice little, nice little afternoon out for for me. Little Treat me time. Yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's important <laughs> for your mental health. You do, you gotta still want to see the Eras Tour movie. Gotta. I think that's on. I think that's streaming now, isn't it? Probably. It could be. I can, yeah, but I could be wrong because I also. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that. if it's free or if it's like a pay for. I think it's you gotta you rent it or something. Okay. Yeah, I think it's on Amazon. Queen needs her money. Yep. I mean, you, you can't it can't stay a billionaire without spend getting money. That's true. Yeah. 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 I mean, somebody has to um, support her her husband who apparently can't play his sport anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah his time is up. I tell you, it's going to be the hardest guillotine moment for her. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought about you when I saw that news article. Oh, Taylor Swift is officially a billionaire. Like, oh, Anthony's going to be so upset. It's going to be the most conflicted I've, I'll be, but I'm still going to do it. You're going to be like the real life version of Wesley Snipes in New Jack City. Yeah. yeah. Crying. Or like Shawn Michaels giving the sweet chin music to <laughs> Rip Flair. Flair. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. I'm sorry. I love you. <laughs> then drop the guillotine. I think Rihanna's a, a billionaire too. That'd be tough too. Yeah, yeah. But listen, I I would. I thought I had you with the Rihanna one. I was like, ooh, I'm gonna get Ant on this one. And sure enough, you stuck to your guns. So I applaud you. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I when I say a cab, I mean all. And yeah. when I say all billionaires, I mean all. Unlike some people here. Yeah, Mark. Mark, I heard. I've listened to last episode. <laughs> I I didn't say anything. <laughs> Other than that, TV shows. Bear season two was really good. Shorzy season two was really good. Started watching the last se- last season of Letterkenny because uh, that's that just dropped. Uh, I think yesterday. I'm watching through that. Yeah, that's what I watched this year. I really didn't watch a whole lot. I don't know what I did otherwise. Yeah, I had plenty of time. Because <laughs> I had plenty of time. It's not like I read books. <laughs> Didn't do that. <laughs> so what did I do? I have no fucking clue. You're just putzing around. <laughs> I must have just had my dick in my hand the entire time. <laughs> I, like, I could go see this movie, but I'd rather have my dick in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I literally frown upon that at the theater. <laughs> they do. Yeah. <laughs> or we can't ask Paul Rubens anymore, but he would not. That's, entra- that's entrapment as far as I'm concerned with Paul Rubens. That's it's it's weird how we can I guess this goes along the lines of separating the art from the artist in a way. Just like most people are usually when you talk about that subject, like, yeah, who cares? Yeah. What else do you go to that theater for? Right, yeah. <laughs> ha- they get hazard pay for the cleanup, don't they? That's why you're there. Right, right. <laughs> it's it's weirder if you're not jerking off at a porn. <laughs> That's true. Like, this guy's just watching it. <laughs> He's critiquing the lighting. He's yeah. taking notes. Someone arrest that man. <laughs> <laughs> He's a psychopath. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> hey, buddy, listen, if you're not here to beat it, <laughs> get out of here. If you're not beating it, beat it. Beat it, yeah. <laughs> We can't have you here weirding out all the customers. <laughs> we, we've gotten uh, the complaint that you're not jerking off, sir. Yeah. Uh, that took a turn. Yeah, right. <laughs> Bring back well, that's what this theater. podcast is. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe we'll come full circle, Ant. We're just like brick and mortars might come back one day, and <laughs> porno theaters will come back. Yeah. It'll be t- That's a tough sell, though, post pandemic, right? <laughs> That is, a tough, that is a tough sell with we're because we're so we're, we're clean freaks now yeah. so yeah well i mean i guess you just set, set up some uh, purell stations at the front or right. yeah you, you, it's like a booth kind of thing yeah i think we're just now we're just talking about like strip clubs yeah pretty much yeah we've invented strip clubs look at us yeah <laughs> I, I i think this we i was talking about it with a friend of mine this kind of feels like the first year where proper movies are kind of making a comeback. Yeah. It, it's not uh, overshadowed by an Avengers movie, a DC movie, stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. Right. You, you got Oppenheimer that I think made close to a billion dollars. Uh, Barbie made a billion dollars. So some, some original movies doing well at the box office. Finally, mm-hmm. as, they, as they said, Barbenheimer saved movies. Yeah. No, it definitely helped for sure. Uh, it 
it showed uh what's the word i'm looking for it, it showed these companies these studios that you can take some risks as long as you know you give us good content you're just not yep. shoveling stuff out there and even not on that in that note godzilla minus one made more money here than it made in japan uh, yep so it, it's it has a good run mm, let's just stop with the superheroes uh, yeah i i'm ready yeah. my body is ready <laughs> yeah i have no desire to see any of the ones that have come out i like i even love guardians of the galaxy the first two i had no interest in seeing the third one that that was actually my number two movie this year uh okay. i i think that it we were in a weird headspace my wife and i and not not saying that i'm not condoning where i put it but that those movies and and i think we've talked about this if you took them out of the mcu they're still good movie the mm-hmm. guardians movies yeah I they're enjoyed good, the first two. Yeah, yeah, they're they're good space operas. Um, good character development, solid story. The music helps, obviously. Uh, but yeah, I'm I think that is pretty much it. I, I'm not excited for anything else. Guardians is over. Uh, Marvel shot their load with Endgame. We were we witnessed it. It was fun. It was good while it lasted. Now it's just it's the fall of the Roman Empire now. Mm-hmm. All right. That's all I got for this episode, guys. You guys got anything else you wanna wanna say? Uh, yeah, I, I just I hope everyone had an awesome holiday season. Uh, I hope I wish well for everybody in the upcoming new year. Go see movies like we were talking about. Go see weird movies like Poor Things. Uh, support those types of movies. And if you're a famous person, please come on our podcast. Please <laughs> don't like don't make me reach out to you. Just you reach out to us. Yeah. Like, especially if you're like a recently canceled, like comedian or something like that. <laughs> Come on. Come on the podcast. Yeah. I'm talking to you, Matt Reif. <laughs> exactly. We'll, we'll let you talk about nine 11 all you want. <laughs> we, I think we have a predominantly male fo- uh, demographic. So right up your alley, make some, <laughs> uh, <laughs> some domestic violence jokes on our podcast. If you want. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> And and I'm sure it'll go over super well. Yep. For all of us. That's For when we make our turn to a right wing podcast. And, yeah, and then the the sad thing is we'll make a lot of money. Yep. See, this grifting is where it's at. Yeah, you know what? I've spent a lot of years not grifting. Maybe that's the problem. It, yeah. I think that's why. That's why we're st- we're in struggle city. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll get Alex Jones on here. We gotta we'll go to the Jordan about. Peterson podcast. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll we'll bring some Kevin Sorbo stuff back in. Mm-hmm. Go on that one podcast that always just seems to just try and shame OnlyFans models. Oh my god! It shows up on my TikTok all the time. Yeah, I no matter what I watch that that uh, podcast weasels its way back in somehow. I don't even know the name of it. I don't know what the point, the actual point is, like the mission statement of that podcast. I just know I hate it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's just to make women feel bad about themselves. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think. Maybe. So maybe that's our next podcast. <laughs> Making women feel bad about themselves. Yeah. Uh, I I might not have a house if I do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like the, the women we know we're married to. So that would that would end pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, how's uh, how's going, yeah, I first, out of my house. First episode, let's shame Jen. Yeah. And then I'll oh. shame my wife. <laughs> and then, you know, we'll have a lot more time to go to the movies by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that but I uh but listen, if we're making a lot of money off of it, it could be worth That's it. That's true. That's true. And then we start the next podcast where we just interview porn stars for no reason. And, and then we buy up. new houses, Ant. And then we'll just have nonsense banal questions for them. <laughs> yeah. This is this is us bitching about the podcast uh, sphere that we're getting fed on our uh, on our various social medias. Um, yeah, but yeah. it's a hellscape out there. <laughs> sometimes maybe things like it's weird for me to say, but maybe sometimes you don't need a podcast. As someone that has a podcast, it's, <laughs> it's weird for me to say. But um, also, we deserve to have a podcast. Yeah, because we're good guys. Yep. The only thing. That could stop a bad guy with a podcast. <laughs> is a good guy with a podcast. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, Mark, you got anything you want to add before we get out of here? No, no. Just uh, thank everybody for listening. It's 
it's been fun. There's been some good engagement throughout the year um, uh, for everything we do here. And um, yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't be doing this if it didn't um, have some sort of um, you know in, engagement with the fans out there. Um, but yeah, I'm just looking forward to you know what what movies we unearth next year, like Karate Christmas Miracle. Um, those are always the fun things that occur throughout the year, and uh, which um, uh, like suggested movies that we get that that turn out to be good choices. Um, it's 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 usually the surprises um, that I that I like um, uh, with this podcast, and uh, yeah, I just hope uh, everyone has a good New Year, and um, yeah, just uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll have things to announce um, early in the year next year. You know, for you know. Uh, different types of podcasts and guests and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, echoing everyone's statement. Hope everybody has a great holiday, great new year. We will be back in 2024 and yeah. Engagement. If you guys are listening to this, if you're hearing my voice and you haven't reached out to say what you like, what you don't like, I uh, suggest any movies, please feel free to reach out on any of our socials, any of our Gmail, tick tampon at gmail.com. Just would love to hear from you where you come, where are you from? You know, we always get excited when we find yeah. a new listener from a different part of the world is listening yeah. to us. Yeah, ASL. Yep. Uh, yes. Uh, I thought you were saying American Sign Language for a second. That's what I thought too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I got did I, it. Did I make you, a Did I make a reference so old that you guys even forgot about it? It took me a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Still don't know it. Age, sex, location. Oh, oh, that's like. Yeah. Hey, well days. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, but yeah, <laughs> check us out. Go see movies. Go see movies that aren't part of the, the system. Watch stuff on Max. They got like a lot of good stuff before yeah. they they throw everything in the incinerator. I can't, I think is what they do with everything. Yeah, that, um, yeah. David Zaslav is just it's constantly, the, this movie gone, this movie it's gone. The, it's the opposite of the Disney vault. Yeah. Instead, instead of going in a vault to come back out, size off just drops it into a, an incinerator. Yeah, yeah. The top of Mount Doom, right, Dan? Yeah. Ooh, look at you at yeah. The uh, like... yeah, and uh, always check out Tubi before they get cease and desist orders. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, that can't be legal. I don't know what they're doing, but it it doesn't feel legal. Uh, yeah, but just check us out on all our socials, Tick Tam Pod, uh, on. X, formerly known as Twitter, as long as that thing's going to exist. I feel like we're never going to get it really rid of it, but no. but it's there. Uh, threads, same. Instagram, same. TikTam pod. TikTam, uh, they called some movie on TikTok. And here's up on the Gmail at TikTampod at gmail.com. That's it. We're going to get out of here. Thanks for listening to us kind of wrap up this year. We will see you in 2024. So for Dan Aquino and Mark Myers, this is Anthony Vecchio saying, have a happy and healthy new year. Thanks for listening to They Called Us a Movie. Subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts and be sure to check us out on Twitter and Instagram at TicTamPod. That's T-C-T-A-M-Pod. You can also check us out on TikTok at They Called Us a Movie.